Pablo Gomez is from, he's one of the specialists from Chile, and he will be doing, a, I would term it a geochronology of, of the earth. Uh, according to his translation, is the story of the earth registered by the geology of Guyana. Thank you, Mr. Nestor. Good afternoon. As uh, Mr. Nestor said, my name is Pablo Gomez. I'm a geologist from the University of Chile, now working in the Division of Geological Services of GGMC. On this pre presentation, I want to highlight the importance of geology on mineral exploration. The fact that many of the largest known world deposits are related to geological process of global scale. How the story of the Earth is represented by the geology of Guyana. How this information can be used to develop exploratory, mo exploratory models. And finally, the necessity of updating the geological map of Guyana. So, the geological context of this country is that it's uh, located at the northeastern portion of the South American subcontinent in the Guyana Shield. That is a concept that we usually use, but the question is, what is the Guyana Shield? Well, according to seismic reflection studies, the Guyana Shield is the northern portion of uh, the Amazonian Craton that is actually divided by the Amazonian Rift Basin. This process occurred at Cambrian times and is associated with the amalgamation of one of many supercontinents that has been uh, occurred so far called Gondwana. So we'll do a time journey starting from the oldest mineral evidence on Guyana that is a senolith zircon mineral that was found on the Iwokrama formation in the heart of this country. Now, during these times, the Earth was strikingly different from the present one, with geodynamic and biochemical conditions that actually comes to defy the uniformitarian principle that was stated by the first geologist. On a 2013 radiometric study develop, developed by Nado et al., he dated several uh, zircon minerals from Iwokrama, Kanuku, and Southern Guyana granite complex. Uh, by, in the case of Iwokrama formation, he found the oldest zircon mineral of America that is 4.2 billion years old, okay? Hadian time. Also, you can see in this graphic that he found Archean ages for Iwokrama volcanic formation and neo archean ages for the Kanuku high metamorphic grade uh, rocks complex, okay? So this led to the question of, of when we are doing radiometric dating, what age are we actually getting here at cratonic areas? We may found uh, that our age is representing the formation of the rock, the original rock, which is called the protolith age. But also, we may found out that this age is rep representing, representing an overprinting printed metamorphic peak. Or even the age that we are getting may represent an arbitrary age that is not related to any geological process. So we got to be very careful when uh, doing radiometric dating, and not only doing that, but also textural and chemical analysis in order to know for sure what age are we getting. Now, if we assume these ages are actually representing the protolith ages of the Kanuku group, these become the oldest rocks of Guyana, neo archean rocks. That would change the geology of Guyana because as we all have uh, here and we all know, Guyana is mainly a paleoproterozoic uh, terrain, okay? So this, this would be a, an important change on the geology. During the Archean, is registered two processes 
that are essential for life, for the evolution of planet Earth. Planet Earth. The first process is the rise of life. And the second process is the mineral evolution. Those, those two processes may be represented at the Kanuku Mountains in Southern Guyana by banded iron stones that are intercalated with migmatites. These banded iron stones are actually representing the boundary between a non-oxygenated earth and an earth that became with a free oxygen available. This free oxygen is due to the activity of photosynthetic organisms, okay? So after the the, this event that has been called the first great oxygenation event, the life evolved from subaquatic simple organisms to the more complex organisms that step land after. And also the mineral evolved from around 500 estimated natural species to almost 1,500 natural mineral species that we know today, as for instance, hematite or magnetite that are, are iron oxides, okay? Didn't exist before. Moving a little forward in our time journey, we'll reach the Paleoproterozoic, that is the most important era here at Guyana, because it represents the development of the greenstone belt all across the Guyana Shield, but here at Guyana, this greenstone belt has been called the Barama Masaruni, greenstone belt. During this time, according to paleomagnetic studies, the Earth, the continents, were amalgamated in a supercontinent called Atlantica. This continent was composed, as you can see, of the Amazonian Craton, here is Guyana, but also of the cratons that compose the, uh, the current Africa. Okay? Uh, give me a minute, please. Um, yes. So, if we look at the aeromagnetic image of Northern Guyana and also the geological map of Northern Guyana, we'll find the evidence of the process of amalgamation of the continent in the way of a thickened, folded, sheared um, magmatic arc that is actually, that are the younger granites and an associated back arc basin that is, is mainly the Barama Masaruni supergroup. On this uh, orogenic, ancient orogenic system was developed the orogenic gold mineralization that we can find now on Omai, Aurora, and other deposits in the country, as well as other deposits in the Guyana Shield, as the El Callao or Rosbel in Sur Suriname, etc. The Proterozoic times is also very important in order to un understand the formation and the extrusion of the diamonds on the shield. The only known Kimberlite deposit on this craton so far is the Guanyamo Kimberlite on the Venezuelan portion of the craton. The formation of these diamonds is dated at around two billion years ago, the same time of development of the Greenstone Belt, event that has been called the Trans-Amazonian Tectonothermal Event. Now we know this is not only one event, it's a series of events, actually there are three peaks registered so far. Okay, so the diamonds have been studied in order to know its origin. Some of them have shown eclogite signatures. As we, we can see here, eclogites are rocks that form at very high pressure and temperature condition uh, at the upper mantle, okay? If this data is correct, maybe one of the first registers of subduction operating, operating on planet Earth. The subduction may have been of island arc type and the origin of the carbon that composed the diamonds, organic, according to carbon isotopic composition of them. Okay, but many diamonds may be at the upper crow, upper mantle for some tectonic event make possible 
the release of the xenoliths carrying them to the surface from depths more than 40 kilometers to the surface. The tectonic process possibly associated with the extrusion of the diamonds on the shield is the breakup of another supercontinent called Rodinia at Neoproterozoic times, specifically at around 700 million years ago. Similar age of the volcanic host rocks of the Wanyamo Kimberlite. By the way, the amalgamation of Rodinia that took place around 1.1 billion years ago is also registered on Guyana by the melanitic rocks of the Kamutku cataclysites. The last sta stage of our, of our time journey across Guyana ends at the Apoteri latitude, where is registered the breakup of the last known supercontinent called Pangaea at the Triassic-Jurassic boundary. This is around 200 million years ago. This event is represented in the country by the volcanic basaltic rocks of the Apoteri Formation that we can see here in green in the geological map. Okay. And is worldwide known as the Central Atlantic Magmatic Province okay, that has registered here at the Guyana Shield, at North America, and at Africa. Actually, this is the largest magmatic province on Earth and it is associated with, with a mass extinction that killed more than 75% of all known species. This event is registered here at Guyana, as is shown by the aeromagnetic image, as an east-west arcuate uh, intracratonic rift basin, okay? the Apoteri Rift Basin. Remarks. If we want to develop an exploratory model for the diamonds of the chill or the gold mineralization on the greenstone belt, it is necessary for us to understand better the geology of the country. It is for everybody known that mineral exploration on this century won't be as straightforward as it was on the previous times, when the main skill needed in order to find a mineral ore was the capacity of doing physical exploration. But now that the, that the more exposed targets have been found, a multi-layer multi data approach is needed in order to generate 3D models of the mineralized upper crust. In the case of the diamonds, we need to know which are the rocks that host them. And to do so, the indicator mineral approach can be the most suitable tool. In the case of gold exploration, the geochemical maps generated by GGMC can be a first tool in order to approach to mineralize areas. But in both cases, if we don't know which are the rock formations and the physical disposition of them, we'll hardly get to the ores. As a final observation, as you can see here, at the right, we have the current geological map of Guyana, 2010, the southern portion of it. And at the right, we have a provisional sketch map of metamorphic fascists developed by Berange in 1973. Uh, if you look at well, you will find out that it's pretty, pretty much the same, OK? So this is showing the necessity of developing a systematic nationwide program in order to remap Guyana, generate an updated and internationally standard level map of the country. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, I saw two formations. The geochronology of the Kiwamrata formation and the geochronology of the Abanabero sweep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you go back to uh, your hand one part of my your first uh your continent uh Atlantica. 
uh, is coming here. Yes. yes. I don't agree at all. Let me tell you why. This is just a, a study, a representation of how may have been the conditions on the Paleoproterozoic. Also, yeah, also the, the work of Alan Gitt, also the work. That, the work of Alan Gibb is also a model. Okay, and you can have many other models. The thing is that actually you are t touching a very important point. We don't know how, were, how was the Earth when the Greenstone Belt was developed. So we need to invest in more studies in order to know it for sure. But if you know, if you can, you tell me that you buy everything that Alan Gibbs says, I would say that that is also disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I must thank uh, Pablo for putting together a very fine presentation. And I must also thank him for the last response. <laughs> All right. 